I think my call to healing really started before I can even remember. I was a precocious 18-month-old toddler exploring the world and uh, doing what a good empiricist would do, which is putting things in my mouth. And what I discovered was a can of lighter fluid that my father had inadvertently left on the kitchen table. And so I was in and out of intensive care for about three months in the hospital. And I don't remember it at all, but I feel pretty confident that there were seeds of this interests that were planted then and my deep reverence for the doctors and the nurses and the candy stripers and all those people that are really organized around helping and um, supporting that process of healing. I grew up in Detroit, Michigan during the 60s and 70s and it was a, a time of great turmoil. Uh, the nation was at war with itself. It was a, a race war and a class war and an ethnicity war and ultimately, you know, a consciousness war, a, a problem of our worldview and of the conflict of different worldviews. And I was very um, angry and frustrated and also impotent uh, as a kid, a teenager, not having any power or ability to make change. And uh, it wasn't until I got into college at Wayne State University that I discovered two books that really changed my life. Uh, the first was by Thomas Kuhn, uh, the classic, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions. And that book was a liberation for me because it said that we live in a paradigm and that these paradigms can change. And what that said to me is that there was the possibility that the dysfunctions we were experiencing were temporary and that there were ways that we could begin to affect something fresh and new. Uh, and that science was a place in which that revolution was possible. So I became really interested in being on the frontier of a paradigm shift. And uh, the second book I read was called uh, Psychic Exploration by Edgar Mitchell, the Apollo 14 astronaut. And in that, he uh, had a collection of essays by scientists who were all deeply committed to this paradigm shift and bringing the rigor and discernment of science to exploring the, the furthest reaches of our human potential. And that was really exciting to me. And it then led me on an odyssey that has taken me to laboratories and universities and research centers all over the world. As we've tried to explore healing, I think about it as a kind of nested set of relationships. And there's the, the ways in which our body, when it's functioning optimally, is, is in a healing relationship. And then you think about the ways in which our thoughts and our emotions impact our bodies and the way our bodies influence our emotions and our, our awareness. Uh, this connection, this uh, exchange is really sort of fundamental and it's it continues to be a pioneering area of research that um, I've had a, a long-term interest in psychoneuroimmunology for example uh, doing research where we're able to measure changes in human physiology um, the immune system the endocrine system uh, and then there's this idea that healing is also nested in our interpersonal relationships. And we know that people are happier and healthier when they're in healthy relationships. And so how can we begin to study and understand the dynamics? And that's been a, an interest for me from a scientific point of view as an anthropologist, as a consciousness researcher. Then there's that embeddedness we have in our environment and how it is that we can really come to terms with the fact that we can't be healthy individuals in a sick environment. And so how can we really begin to understand that it's fundamentally interconnected? Uh, and then finally, there is this kind of idea that there are these transpersonal realms of connection, of relationship. And so people who embrace their spirituality, who are involved in religious practices or activities, uh, tend to be happier, healthier, and live longer. And so it was a, a question of trying to understand, is that lifestyle, is that social support, or is there something else beyond that? Uh, one of the things we studied was the idea that love and altruism may be a component of that. So my work on this idea of a transpersonal relationship and our embeddedness in something bigger uh, began a long time ago when I was doing laboratory research. And we were really interested in testing the claims made by healers that they could influence somebody with their minds at a distance and in ways that precluded a kind of placebo response. 
And so we designed an experimental protocol where we invited healers in, put them in a room, and uh, there was then a subject or a, a volunteer in another room, and we were monitoring their autonomic nervous system activity. And so the idea was that the healer in a distant room at random times throughout the session attempted to influence the distant person's physiology. And what we were able to do then is measure the average amount of physiological activity during these intention periods as compared to the control periods. Uh, and we have found consistently over many experiments and replications all over the world that there are small but significant differences in those two conditions. So it appears, based on a lot of science, that our intention has the capacity to reach out into the world and affect change in people's biology, psychology, uh, and that this can be done under the most rigorous scientific condition. Absolutely essential if we want to understand the mechanisms of healing, that it be done with a kind of transdisciplinary, interdisciplinary collaboration, because it's really a complex system. And anytime we're practicing reductionism, you miss out on the whole. And so to the extent we can use whatever those methods are that allow us to have reliability and predictability, control over the conditions, and at the same time to recognize that there's this kind of integral framework and that we need to have the pieces embedded in the whole, and the only way to do that is through a transdisciplinary kind of collaboration. The research that I'm most involved in right now has to do with experimenter effects and this uh, question of objectivity in science. We know that um, different researchers get different results in their experiments. Uh, even under you know, randomized controlled circumstances, we find there are different outcomes based on qualities that the experimenter brings. And so trying to understand better, you know, what are those qualities? How can we take these fields that are very difficult to harness and put into a controlled environment uh, how can we better understand what are the, the qualities that the researcher brings that lead to particular kinds of outcomes? I'm also really interested in the skeptic proponent debate and the discourse that happens when people from differing perspectives work in collaboration. Because I think in that exchange, uh, we invite a kind of inquiry that is you know, beyond what we understand now and that will lead us to new questions and new possibilities. I've, over the last couple of years, been deeply immersed in death awareness and helping people to come to terms with healing their relationship with their own mortality. And I feel that one of the deep ruptures in our culture is our fear our terror around our own death and our, around our mortality. And when people deny their mortality, when they get into this kind of death denial, it leads to these aberrant behaviors. It leads to aggression toward people who are different from ourselves. And so I like to think about death awareness for peace. As we come to terms with our own sense of our humanness, I think we can also then respect the humanness of people who are different from ourselves. And so inviting in this kind of creative collaboration around difference and with the idea of bringing awareness to our mortality so that we can live more fully, we can truly heal our relationships. Uh, I think that's you know my goal right now. Well, I appreciate what she is doing because it provides a, a framework for bringing together different perspectives, different worldviews, different methodologies uh, to try and understand the relationship between consciousness and healing. I think when you're engaged in a serious dialogue with people who come from a different point of view, come from a different, you know, academic background, but worldview, culture, uh, religion, spirituality, whatever the, those differences are, when people of these differing perspectives come together, it can lead to a kind of creative convergence that helps us to see things in an entirely new way. And I think that's really exciting and I think it's really essential. I mean, I think that we have more questions than answers and to the extent we can keep a, a humility about not knowing, it will open us to new possibilities.